Pulled up, come get the loot You better have been watching what you do None of that list you got, they gon' go through Are you being good, having you? Santa Claus pulled up, come get the loot You better have been watching what you do None of that list you got, they gon' go through You being good, having you I'm not trying to put demons in your mind I just wanna wish you a good night Hope you get the cream with the pot I'm what's under the tree, hit your body Look like a fool, even the mom will shit Look like a kid with the heart that's lit Santa is bringing all he can fit You did your part, he doing his art, uh, yeah, like mm. I'm the super mint and then the this facility I get the people what they want with agility Yes, moving quickly, past ups and my enemies They just file legends, but they all real of me Trust me, I'm about to get you hooked up I'ma get your jealous friends crying On my army shift, I'ma get your Christmas vibe Santa Claus pulled up, come get the loot You better been watching what you do None of that list you got, they gon' go through But you been good, haven't you? Santa Claus pulled up, come get the loot You better been watching what you do None of that list you got, they gon' go through You been good, haven't you? My eyes start to stream from the offset Between the wants and the needs I don't process like they talk in French when they say I got nothing I cannot comprehend How we gave up on justice We've been feeling beaten down All left behind on this holy night Least we can do is try To make things right Trust me, I'm about to get you hooked up I'ma get your jealous friends crying On my army shift yeah. I'ma get your Christmas vibing Santa Claus pulled up, come get the loot You better have been watching what you do None of that list you got, they go for loot But you've been good, how do you? Santa Claus pulled up, come get the loot You better have been watching what you do None of that list you got, they go for loot myself so I can hear myself. Here we go. Um, welcome to Black and Blue Live again. This is Black and Blue Street Life where I take the Black and Blue podcast out of the studio and into the streets. And today we are live, like I said, 
from the city of Riviera Beach, Florida. And I got two officers here. We're going to talk about everything that they go through over here in Riviera Beach. I'm here visiting. I'm in their house. So let's, uh, let's check them out real quick. Let's introduce them real quick. And then we got a special surprise for you guys. So let me bring up our first one here. Our first officer here is an officer here with uh, Riviera Beach. Like I said, she is in the community policing uh, unit here, Riviera Beach PD. Everyone check out Officer Cherise Phillips. Like Mr. Peters said, Officer Sharice Phillips here at the Riviera Beach Police Department. All right. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. All right. And uh, our next officer here, let me get that off the screen there because I am not Sharice. You are. <laughs> <laughs> our next officer here, he also here uh, works for Riviera Beach. He is in also in the community policing unit. Everyone help us welcome in Officer Walter Terrell. What's going on, everybody? I'm Walter Terrell, Riviera Beach PD. Been here for 10 years, baby. Let's go. 10 years, 10 years, all right. So we'll talk about both of you guys' journey into law enforcement, uh, what you guys like, what you guys do here at Riviera Beach, and then uh, we'll have some fun with that. So uh, right. without further ado, uh, let's bring both of us up here on the screen. So we got a special uh, surprise for you. In addition to our two officers here, uh, they have been gracious enough to lend us their canine unit, and they're gonna come out here and give us a, dis uh, a demo real quick with their canines. So uh, without further ado, we can have our officers, our canine officers go get their, their pups and then we'll have, a, uh, we'll have a demonstration here. So yeah, I hope you guys like that. Uh, first for black and blue, first for black and blue. So in the meantime, while they're getting their, uh, getting their pups, uh, why don't we, uh, our camera person's on the way back, uh, let me introduce. Uh, Chief, why don't you just get on here real quick? Um, come on, come on, on here with me real quick. <laughs> This is Chief Osgood of the uh, Riviera Beach Police Department. Let me get that down here. Let me get out your way. So <laughs> there, he is. there he is. We are live here, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, the city manager for Riviera, City Riviera, Riviera Beach is here as well. So uh, yeah, let's have some fun. So uh, without further ado, who are our canine officers out here with this? So um, right now we have Officer Justin Hawkins, and he has canine Perez. OK. All right, so take a look there, what we got there, that looks. So what, what, what is he doing? He's doing some obedience, uh, making sure that Officer Perez follows his commands. Oh, wow. That's cool. That, yeah, he's, that only, he's focused, so he enjoys that toy that Officer Hawkins has, so he's focused on Officer Hawkins when he's listening and then at the toy. Nice. They understand German, I believe, okay. and English. So he's yeah, saying. I, yeah, I don't know any German. So. <laughs> Guten Tag. That's all I know. <laughs> Hello. Oh, <Yes>. okay. <laughs> that's a beautiful dog too. It is. They are yes. German shepherds. All right. How how old is this dog here? I believe he is seven. Seven years old. Seven, okay. Yes, Officer Hawkins, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe, one. maybe 27. Yeah. <laughs> not, definitely not seven. Yeah, and they, they uh, from what I understand, canines, they, they live for that toy. And yes. Yes, and they want that toy. They want nothing more than that toy, and then that's how they train them. Yes. Find whatever. What, what sort of dog is that? Is that a uh, drug German dog? Shepherd. He's an uh, apprehension. Apprehension. Yes. Right? So he's a, okay. So yeah, we don't say bite anymore. We say no, apprehension. Apprehension. Dog, right? apprehension. Yep. apprehension. Okay. All, right. All right. All right. So do we have a, another one or was that it there? No, nope. we have two more coming. Okay. All right. Awesome. This is, uh, is Ben coming? Yeah. It's okay. going to be, I believe, Officer Ben Smith mm -hmm. with Canine Fox. Nice. Okay. So while they're getting ready here, I'll put the camera back on us and okay. uh, remind everybody, please, you can send in your comments on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. That's where we are live right now. So please send in your comments and, uh, and your questions, and we will get those answered for you. All right. Hopefully we will get those on ASAP, because like I said, uh, I had a little technical difficulty there in the middle, in the, in the beginning there. But we got it worked out. That's what we do here when we live. This is live. I always say that this is live, so we got to account for that. All right, so we got the, uh, the canines. Back up here? Yes, Officer Ben Smith. All right, let's check out what. Officer Ben Smith's also part of the uh, SWAT team. 
as well as Officer Hawkins. All right, so here, here it comes. comes. And what's what's the name of this dog here? Fox. Fox. V O X. Oh, Fox. 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 V is in Victor. Yes. Okay. Officer Hawkins coming with a bite sleeve. Uh oh. Yes. <laughs> Agitators, they're, they're, as they're called, right? Right. Yep. Agitators. And you see Vox is already focused. Yes. He's pretty good that uh, he won't do anything until the until handler. Until told. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's a lot of training involved. I want to say 480 hours. Yeah. The dogs do go home with him. Nice. Yeah. So and this was a training day for them, right? This was their training yeah. day, yes. Yeah, every so Wednesday. They train every yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They gotta stay on top of that. Yep. So. Here he goes. Here he goes. So Officer Smith gave a command for him to go and then come back. Okay. So that's pretty good that uh, he didn't just continue on and then bite even though he was told not to. Correct. And now he, there he goes. <laughs> 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 And, and what is the dog trying to do at, at this point? So he wants the uh, suspect to stop moving. Uh, and, and Officer Hawk is going to continue on until he feels that Vox has made his complete apprehension. All right. Officer Smith comes in, taps on Vox, make sure everything is OK. And he's won his prize. And he won his prize. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Box. He's checked. He's checked. Yeah. Box is checked. Box is Czechoslovakian. Okay. All right. Three He's old. three years old. Nice. All right, Box. All right. Let's Czechoslovakian. It, it speaks German. <laughs> Let's give it up for uh, yes. Box and German and English. Our other, and our other canine there. Bilingual pups. Yes. And then, so we as officers, after that, after that bite, after that apprehension, mm -hmm. we are obligated to make sure that that suspect. Receives medical receives attention. Medical yes. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. All right. Love that. Love that. Thank you for our canine unit. We have a, another one coming? Yes. Up? Okay. So that'll be Officer Javaris Harvey, and he has canine Chloe. Okay. She's a bloodhound. Yes. A bloodhound. Okay. Yes. Now, does your department have any narcotics canines? They have two. Okay. Yes. Gun, yeah. and, gun apprehension and narcotics. Oh, okay. Do they smell uh, firearms? Do they smell explosives as well? Or? Not explosive. We don't have any gum dog, uh, bomb dogs. No bomb dogs. Right. right. Not yet. <laughs> and as she looks over to the chief. <laughs> and the city manager. And the city manager. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely the city manager. The All right, so who we got here? Let's, uh, let's pull this up. All right, Ready to here play. comes canine Chloe and Officer Javaris Harvey. Chloe is about three years old. And, and what sort of things? So does she this dog has do? an amazing nose. Uh, she works with us when we have missing children and adults. She's our only female dog. Okay. So they, they get a scent from. From Articles what? of clothing, um, hairbrushes. <laughs> she's sneezing right now. <laughs> she's like, allergy, yeah, she's allergies. Yeah, puppy allergies. <laughs> I want to say she weighs about eighty-five pounds. A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. yeah you can't beat that. <laughs> she's super loving, very friendly. Um, yes, yeah, getting up there to our camera. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. So uh, unfortunately, the mic over there on that camera is not working right now, but we can see that very friendly dog. So yeah, she wants to engage. Wants to engage, absolutely. You know, I have some experience. Um, these are really for uh, missings, yeah. um, things of that nature, missing uh, adults, missing children, right? Yes. Yep. So mm -hmm. at my own agency, we had a missing uh, elderly person. Mm -hmm. uh, two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. that uh, his wife woke up and he was no longer in the bed and uh, she called us and said you know her husband was missing he's had dementia and all that sort of stuff right. so uh, my department we don't have a any canine we have two canines 
but no bloodhound. So we called the sheriff's department out. Right, right. They brought their their uh, bloodhound out, and we tracked. I walked because it was it was my call. So I walked with that canine and that handler. We walked like two miles, and we found him sitting down in the middle of the night, freezing in his in his uh, in his underwear. Yeah, and we found him two miles away from from his house. Yeah. There Chloe. Is this put the oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, Chloe. That's awesome. That's a beautiful dog. That, that's a beautiful dog. She loves Phillips. Love her. <laughs> she don't love me that much. <laughs> now, why is that? Does somebody feed the dog when they die? Yeah. She might get a treat or two. She actually. might get a treat that's or two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you to our canines. <laughs> here today, Chloe and the rest of the canines that came out here. I hope you guys like that as well. Uh, all right, so let's get into uh, our conversation here. What we're talking about here, uh, the canine still wants to play back there with you. <laughs> Appreciate you, appreciate you. All right, so uh, our conversation here today, we're gonna talk about you know your journey into law enforcement, um, why you joined the profession, and what you like about it. So. We'll start with you, uh, Officer Phillips. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Did you always want to be a police officer? Um, I always knew I wanted to be in uniform. Okay. Uh, I did retail for 20 years. Um, I'm not much of a fascinista, so <laughs> 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 I went to go to the Army, decided to work retail. Um, I applied for NYPD, and then 9 11 occurred. Uh, I was working for Adidas at the time. I got recruited from Nike to come to, down to Florida and that's some, some officers in West Palm Beach. And so you were living up in- I was uh, living in New York, yeah. Oh, nice, Yeah, nice. Okay. big city, big apple. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um, so I was talking to some uh, West Palm officers down in uh, West Palm Beach. I opened up the Nike store there and uh, talked about becoming a law enforcement officer due to my, my NYP application being on hold. Uh -huh. um, they said, yeah, there's no age cutoff. You can, you can come on and do the academy in six months and apply to different agencies, so. Here I am. All right. Well, congratulations. How long you been here? Four been years. Here? Four yes. years. Yes, and I work every single day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Literally every yeah. single day. You do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what do you what do you do now? So I'm part of the community policing team, the social media team, uh, the motor unit. Uh, I just got um, part of the uh, hostage negotiation team, uh -huh. which is super exciting. Um, and I may try swaps. Wow, you may, I don't know. Doing it all, huh? I don't know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so in your assignment now with the community policing, what yep. sort of things are you guys responsible for? So we partner a lot with our CRA um, to do all the events that are in the city. What, and what promote is that, the city. CRA? What? CRA Community Redevelopment Association. Okay. Um, and they do events all throughout the city. Uh, right now the big event is Winter Wonderland. We've had, we want to create an experience for the city so that People can have something to do every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, there's food trucks, there's live performances, DJs. We have uh, created a ice skating ring because we are here in Florida, so it's very hard to uh, <laughs> get snow and ice. Yes, yes. Um, it's been very successful. Uh, we, we still have our tree out in Santa. We celebrated Kwanzaa, Chanukah, and Christmas um, throughout these all three weeks, and it's over December 18th. Okay. Um, so we get highly involved in that so that the kids and parents see us and they get get used to us. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of events um, with restaurants who want to give back. It was super huge last year um, with a community group called the Singer Island Association. Where is Singer Island? Sika. Sika. Yep. Singer Island Community Association. Um, they created a GoFundMe fund for uh, COVID because the kids were not going to school. They did a partnership with Johnny Longboats, one of the restaurants on Ocean Avenue, mm -hmm. and we delivered the food. Yeah. So that was super cool because the kids are like timing us. They're like, hey, you weren't here by 11 o'clock. Right. When are you coming back? Yeah. You know, it's just, so it was just, even though they weren't in school during their lunches, they were still getting their lunches through Sika, through Johnny Longboats, and through us. Mm -hmm. um, nice. So that helped out too. And the parents were super, super grateful um, about having us come to the because it was, it was hard yeah. as things were shut down and they don't have transportation. They rely on public transportation for the kids to get on the bus to go to school to get their meals. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for all that. Thank you for all you do there. And uh, good. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Officer Terrell, tell everybody a little bit about your story. All right, man. Like I said, I'm Officer Terrell, Red Beach PD. Uh, never wanted to be a cop uh, growing up. I wanted to be in the entertainment business. I wanted to act, do music. That's what I wanted to do. However, you know, 
my mom, let me run that back. My mom's a deputy, well, just retired, but she's a deputy sheriff for Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. She did 30 years. So, you know, seeing her and, and you know, coming home tired and everything and, you know, police uniform, I was like, I don't want to do that. I want to stick to entertainment. However, um, became a um, graduate from high school, became a father at an early, early age. And I was like, you know, I need something stable, something that's going, going to, you know, provide food for me and my family. And I'll, I'll never forget looking at my mom come home in her uniform. And I was like, you know what? I think I can do that job. And uh, been at it ever since, you know. Um, took me two years to get hired with River Beach PD, but I got hired and said, um, a couple months make 10 years for me, so 10 years. Wow, yeah. 10 years, all right, 10. congratulations. Thank yeah. you for your service here. Thank you, thank you. And where are you signed right now? Um, so I'm part of the COP unit, mm -hmm. Community Ori or Oriented Policing. Um, Social media team, which I love. Uh, <laughs> um, EFF, emergency some other force. things. What, what was it? EFF is emergency field oh, force. Oh, um, she want me to break it down for y'all. Emergency field force. But prior to me becoming a COP, I strictly worked with the juveniles. I was a school resource officer. I did that for about six, almost seven years. Um, just strictly working with the, the juveniles. And I loved it, man. Loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Nice, nice. Okay, so um, so you've been here ten years. What what other things have you done with Riviera Beach? Uh, you said some of the things I've done. With yeah, the yeah. What other assignments? So oh, you helped with the great program. program. That's yes. right. So yeah, that was assignments. Assignments. You know what? That was the great program. That probably was one of the, that was that was fun because I actually received number one in Palm Beach County for graduating the most great students, and great stands for gang resistance education and training. Okay. Um, strictly with the youth, and we were targeting. You know the youth more likely the middle schoolers because that's when they're more impressionable yep. and we would you know want to keep them from the gangs and keep them out the streets and you know hopefully turn their life around to something positive give them a positive outlook in life um and like i said i was number one at palm beach county graduating most students um also received the award um in orlando for trunk or treat which is one oh, of our yes. big events the first year we did it had over two thousand people come out and we actually received an award for that, man. Nice, so, yeah. nice. All right, appreciate that, appreciate that. So tell everybody out here listening, watching a little bit. We're, we're live. Sirens, yeah, we're right. Sirens. Sirens. Fire, Sirens. fire rescue. <laughs> fire, yep, yep, we are live. Um, what about the uh, the population of Riviera Beach? Tell us a little bit about the, the, the city, how large it is, the population, kind of the demographics of Riviera Beach. So, um, First of all, the city is like 9.2 square miles. That's okay. how big the city is. Um, we have where, about, where are we kind of situated in Florida? Where are we? It's, ooh, it's South Florida. Okay. It's South Florida. Um, like how far? I know everybody. So we're like an hour north of Miami. Okay, yeah. Everybody, everybody knows, knows Miami. Everybody knows right? Miami. <laughs> and then two hours south of Orlando. Yeah. Wow. There you go. So, <laughs> all right. In case you're not familiar with, you know. Um, and actually, a street over from West Palm Beach. Yes. And everyone should yes. know West Palm yeah, Beach. Yeah, no perfect. West Palm Beach. Okay. Yeah. How how large is the, your department? 116. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So 116. Pretty good size. Pretty yep. good size. Yep, yep, yep. Department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you guys are working three twelves or four tens or five days a week. What are you guys working on here? Um, Seven days a week. <laughs> Eight to sixteen hours a day. Because she chooses to. <laughs> but, she chooses to. But because we're in specialized well, units together, we work Monday through Friday. Right. Okay. But any road patrol will work three on, two off, and then what is it? Two on, three off. So, and it's what. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yes, they can. They can <laughs> oh, hear that. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. And we can get yeah, the yeah, we get Come the on, guys. Check out, it on purpose. <laughs> check out what they're the, watching live too. Yeah, let's go. Fire is rolling down the street there. Yes, you have that friendly rivalry between yeah. PD yeah, they, they and fire. Yeah, they're doing it on purpose. And they just go into the supermarket. Too. That's it, that's it, that's all, that's all. <laughs> but yeah, we work We work eight hour shifts, but Road Patrol work 12 hour shifts. And then like I said, it'd be three on, then two off, then two on and three off. All right. Like that. All right. Wow, they got some loud sirens. Yes. Don't they? And it's yes. still going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These mics pick up everything. Ooh, so I hope you guys uh, didn't, didn't get too distracted with that. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, they're going to lunch. They, exactly, that's what <laughs> that's we just said. Yeah. They're, going, they're going to lunch, they're going to the supermarket, because they, go, they got to do everything together, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love our fire department, though. Um, so, 
this past couple of years, being African Americans, but all of us here, African Americans, um, has been pretty trying, right? But also being what this show is called Black and Blue has been pretty trying as well. What's been you guys' experience out here in Riviera Beach? I know uh, me driving through here, I see a lot of African Americans. This is pretty. Uh, I don't, I don't know how, how large is the African American community here, Black and Brown community it's, here. It's pretty large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What has been you guys' experience ever since you know Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd, all that sort of stuff that happened in 2020? Right, you want to go first? Yeah. Okay. So um, it's actually been great. Uh, they've been highly respected. They want us here. They're completely like, I appreciate you guys. It sucks what's going on on other cities, other communities. We want you to be here. We want you to protect us. Uh, yeah. We've had three peaceful protests last year, um, and we were well prepared for anything to go bad. However, it did not occur. Absolutely. What, what about you, Officer? Um, I remember, was it the Michael Brown case? I remember that, that whole incident, and I just remember that same day pulling someone over and walking up to the car and someone just putting their hands up saying, you know, don't shoot. And I'm like, I'm not even on that you know I'm, I'm literally just trying to let you know your lights are off you know just turn your lights on that's it you know but you know for the most part i say is it's really cool that i know my department especially river beach we've really been bridging the gap between the community and law enforcement so that relationship is is way better you know it's all about trust and i believe like they're starting to really trust us yeah, yeah. absolutely and uh, Officer Phillips, you're a female, yes, and sir. this profession is male-dominated, right? What's been your experience being a female in this profession for the past four years? Surprising. Uh, I have 115 big brothers. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they are very protective over so me. Wait, so wait a minute, how many, how many other females are there? Uh, we have part? 11. 11, okay. 11, yeah. Okay. From, right. from Captain Down. So, yeah, so you think that's about a 10% ratio? Right, problem. 10%. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad, actually. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. But I do feel like they are very protective uh, with me, over me, uh, especially on scenes. Um, if they feel like something's out of hand, then they'll, they'll definitely jump in. Now, how do you, how do you take that? I, I'm okay with it. Okay. Save me. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'm not, the, I'm not the tallest. I'm not the biggest. I'm definitely not the strongest. Um, Fortunately, in my, in my situations, I haven't had to utilize anyone. Right. But they are there <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. to help. Uh, but on the flip side, though, you know, you would, you know, you're a duly trained, appointed officer in the state of Florida. You know, at some point, you want to be able to handle your own, or, or be given the opportunity to handle your own. I mean, you don't feel like sometimes if people are stepping in on you, that they don't respect you as, as an officer? You ever feel that way? Sometimes, absolutely. Like, oh, you're just a girl, and then, yeah. you know, what are you, what are you doing with that uniform? Um, you know, why, why are you an officer? Right. You know, it's just, so it's yeah. a little disheartening. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, you, you know how to take it and roll yeah. with it, Everything right? with a smile. Everything, <laughs> yeah, I, I see that smile. I see that smile right now. Absolutely, appreciate that. All right, I understand that we may not be going live right now for some reason, but we are gonna post this right after after we get done here. So technical difficulties, things happen here in Florida. We, we, got, we got wind. The wind, been, yeah. the wind sirens. Raining. Yeah, the background here on the, uh, you, you guys will see it, is, uh, is a nice sunny beach uh, right there, but it's not too sunny right now. It's been, it's been rainy. Right. But back home in California, believe it or not, it's been in the 40s and the 50s. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not, it. I'm not hating it right now. I'm not, <laughs> hating, I'm not hating this right now, yeah, so. Seriously considering th this move out here. So, <laughs> talking about talk about Florida. So, Officer Terrell, you uh, you been born and raised out here? Yeah, I was in born. Florida? Yep, born in Miami, raised in Palm Beach County. Oh, okay. But uh, Officer Phillip, you say you were a Jersey girl. You I am a Jersey girl, North yeah, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I've how, been here about seven years, eight years. How's that culture shock shock been with you? Uh, it's a shock. Yeah. It is. It's, 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 I'm still getting used to it. Yeah, still um, getting used to it. Huh? Still getting used to it. Yeah, especially now the holly, holiday time. Um, I'm used to snow, sleet, rain, bundled up, fireplace, right, yeah. hot chocolate, yeah, chai tea latte. It's a little different during the holidays, It right? is. It's, yeah. it's iced teas and sand. Coca-Cola. And co <laughs> My favorite drink, Coca-Cola. Yeah. Coca <laughs> yeah, see, that's, that's the only difference. You don't get a white Christmas out here. I don't, you, yeah. get a, you get a tan Christmas, though, I right? Get, I get, yeah, so there's a tan Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't miss the snow. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio. I don't, I don't miss that snow, not one bit. Shoveling it, driving it. But it's in pretty it. when it comes down. That's the best Only, part, and it's nice and soft. Yes. You know. See, here's here's the thing: where where we live, 
we live like 30 minutes from a from a mountaintop called Big Bear. So we can see it from my house. Mm -hmm. We can see the snow. We can drive up there, play some snowballs, and then drive back down. We're done. We don't have to, we don't have to drive <laughs> in it. We don't have to scrape off our windshield. Right, right, we right. don't have to salt the, the roads and all that sort of <laughs> stuff. So, I, yeah. But the one thing you guys got to deal with down here is that humidity, though. How, how, how are you getting, I mean, I know it gets kind of humid up there in the New York area, but nothing like this down nothing here. Nothing like no. this. Yeah. We'll be on a, a traffic stop, a traffic accident. Um, they hydrate it, man. Yeah, they, they hydrate it. It just yeah. pours. The sweat just pours from you. And you, the like you feel the steam coming off yeah. you. Yeah. The, you know, the sweat is dripping from under your arms, all over your face. So. Yeah. I got a buddy that just uh, just uh, retired from out my way. He moved out here. And when he was telling me he was going to do that, I was like, but what about the humidity? What you going to do about that? He said, the same thing I do over here in the summer. Stay in the house in the AC. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat that. And he's not going to be working, so he doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> Fortunately, we have Publix and Wawa that are on the opposite ends of the city, so we can hop in there and cool yeah. off. There you go. There and you Walgreens. Go. And yeah. Walgreens, yes. Yes. I, I, I love it out here, though. I'm, I'm seriously considering when I, when I pull the plug. Yeah, it's beautiful, when I pull the plug, man. I might be out here. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. So the holidays are coming. We were mm -hmm. just talking about what it's like out here in the holidays. What are you guys doing? You guys doing toy drives? What sort of things are you doing for your community out here in, in uh, Riviera Beach? So this Friday, December 17th, uh, we'll be doing our annual Shop with the Cop. That's where we randomly choose a school, um, elementary school within the city, and we'll take about, well, actually it's our largest this year, so we're taking 22 children, and we're letting them spend a hundred, each child will get a hundred dollars, and they get to shop inside of Walmart for uh, Christmas. Um, what else we got going on? Two toy drives this Saturday also um, at Barracuda Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's one from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and the other from 2.30 to 4.30 or 2.30 to 5.30. Um, in the interim, we have amazing donators that have been giving us toys. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give those out to the rest of our um, co-workers. And as they're patrolling through next week, they'll have toys to give out to the children, some of their parents. I know I, um, we have a particular family um, that certain officers go to routinely every year as a sponsor right. to give to make sure they have a great Christmas. Toys, food, give them yeah. a beautiful Christmas. That, that's what I wanted to ask you guys. As part of the community policing unit, you guys are helping, you know, down and out families, down and out people as well. Um, is, is there a pretty large homeless population out here in Riviera Beach? It's growing. It's yeah. growing. It's growing. Yeah. 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 We tend to see, we tend, we know our homeless um, right. individuals, and when we see someone new, we're like, hey, where'd you come from? All right. How long have yeah. you been here? All right. Yeah. yeah. Can we help you? But we do have uh, uh, pamphlets created that every time we encounter a homeless individual, we try to help them to go to some of the local churches yeah, and facilities resources. to get cover. Right. Yeah. Resources. Yeah. Can you guys talk about a success story that you guys have had on a, on a family or an individual that? You know, was probably down and out, and, and you guys so, resources. Yeah, I ain't gonna say his name, but no, don't, um, don't, you don't have to do that. Put him so, on I, and it, so this this kid is basically like my brother now. You know, um, he was he was okay. So he had he had a troubled life growing up. Went to multiple foster care homes, um, but then was adopted by his his grandmother, his stepdad's uh, mother, which was you know not really his grandmother. But, you know, he came to me, I met him at KFC, he came to me, he's like, hey, Officer Real, man, I want to be an officer, you know, what can I do? And I said, you know what, I'm coming up with this program, which is the Police Explorers, which gives opportunities to juveniles, uh, the chance to see what we do as law enforcement officers, uh, you learn everything that a cop does, and, you know, hopefully after you graduate the program, you can become a law enforcement officer. He joined, became the leader of the class, and his senior year of high school, he ended up becoming homeless again. And, you know, at that point, I was like, man, I'll just move you in with me. I just want you to graduate high school. And oh, wow. some, someone actually stepped up and allowed him to move in and help him get, you know, a uh, placement for a, a home. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Kept grinding, kept grinding, kept grinding. And now, this weekend, December... 18th, no, 17th, actually. Yeah, December 17th, he'll be graduating from the academy, and now he's a Melbourne PD officer. Nice. And so that's like one of my biggest yes. success stories, man. All right. That's, yeah. that's what's up. Proud of him. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. Austin Phillips, do you have any, uh, any success stories like I that? I do. So I've been here four years, and one of my first cases uh, for a missing individual 
Uh, she was cutting school, she was fighting, arguing with mom, arguing with the brother. Um, when, we, when we located her, she was actually uh, very close to home, just sitting in a car. And it was, let's see, it was a hot month. <laughs> as we have many in, in South Florida, and I yeah. sat in the car with her <laughs> until she decided to talk um, from there we built a relationship uh, um, with the brother and mom and anytime she had an issue they would call me she went from a 0.8 grade average she stopped fighting uh, to straight A's and, and, she, and she's just amazing she's like my little prodigy I love her Nice, nice. That's what's up. See, that's what community policing mm -hmm. is all about. Um, you know, they, they see what we do on TV and, and, you know, but that's not what we're here. We're, we're here for our communities. We're here to help out. And you guys said that you guys are 116 sworn. Yes. Right. But right now, law enforcement is taking some hits, yep. as we all know, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't want to be police officers. Have, yep. have you guys seen that? that kind of decline in people who actually want to become police officers, aside from <laughs> from the one that you were talking about, oh. Officer Terrell? Um, I, I, you know what, honestly, it, this is a crazy story. You know, we just went to a uh, job fair with the other law enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. and there were literally more recruiters than people that are looking to become a law enforcement officer. Um, yeah. I guess with everything that's going on, yeah, I people mean, don't want to be yeah, I remember, I remember when I was coming through and probably when Chief Osgood was going through, there used to be lines around the block just wow. to put in applications. Right. And now, you know, we, we can't find people to fill these jobs. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. man. How, how do we fix that? What do you think is a, is a solution for that? I think just being honest and truthful about what the job really is. Yeah. It's, it's not all, you know, cupcakes and coke. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um, it is, it is tough. You, it is emotional. Um, but it's fun and it's rewarding. Absolutely. So we look for heart, right. courage, dedication. And if you really want to help, really, really want to help people, um, become a cop, become a fire rescue, uh, um, become a nurse, become a doctor. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's, this is extremely rewarding to be a police officer during this time, especially during this time, because we can make the change from everything that's occurred in our yeah. past. Be, be the change that you want to see. Yeah, I mean, and at the end, it's, it's all, it's all how you make it. Um, I know for me, well, especially Officer Phillips, for us, you really don't, you would never see me, I might be upset sometimes, but you never see me mad, you know. Um, yeah, the two of you guys look like happy-go-lucky. And, and, that's, and that's the thing, like I said, is what you make it. Yeah, this job is tough, but man, I'm always smiling, I'm alive, and I get to help people, and you know, we crack jokes all day, you know, so it is. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, and yeah, oh yeah, the we great, got great chief. chief. Yeah. You know, so, like I said, it's, it's all how you make it. Starts from the top. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. And uh, again, the holidays are here. This is a time when people are leaving their packages in their cars and things like that, and identity theft. What What are some of the safety tips that we can offer some of our viewers about shopping during the holidays? You know, it's funny. Just did a uh, video that I'll be putting out tonight, or actually Friday, okay. about See? holiday timing, safety. Timing, timing, yes. timing. Yeah. Great timing. <laughs> One of the things, be cautious of your doors. Make sure, well, car doors, make sure they're locked. Um, don't leave anything open on the seats, on your Visible. vehicle. Vis visibility. Visible. Same with your home. Don't leave a Christmas tree by the front window. Um, or especially where you can really, see the gifts. Really, most people think that's pretty. Yeah? I know, but... Right, they want to show it off, but... <laughs> yeah. Same with the Christmas tree. With the thing, Christmas tree. You know? So. Um, as a, what's another thing? Because we just did a... Oh, I Amazon. Know I know we Amazon. have a lot of people that use Amazon. Yes. Here. <laughs> have the package delivered to when your home or have it delivered to a neighbor's home or have a family member pick the packages up because right. you have a lot of porch pirates. Porch pirates. Yep. Which we did a great video on also, produced by me and... Film all right, all right. <laughs> I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get a hold of that one so I can show that. <laughs> so I can show that one. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a big thing everywhere. The yeah. Amazon porch yes, fires. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. I'm, you know, yeah. I can I can tell you how many times we've gotten those calls as well. Mm -hmm. And you see those videos and and we got the rings and then you can see. Yeah. Yeah, Ring Camera also puts out alerts. So yeah. I'll see those alerts all that's the time. That's big thing. Yeah. Ring also. Yeah. yeah. So Cast absolutely. surveillance. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Another big thing during the holidays is people are partying, right? They're out with their loved ones and their friends, and then they get to the drinking, right? 
what are some of the, the safety tips we can talk about drinking? And you guys do, do you guys do any sort of uh, DUI enforcement during the holidays as well? So our traffic unit will be doing DUI enforcement on, I believe, what, Christmas and uh, New Year's yeah. Eve? Uh, that's a big, big one. Um, at the end of the day, just don't drink and don't drive. Don't drink and drive. Don't do drink not and drive. drink. I yeah. mean, you can't Utilize say it. Utilize Uber, Lyft. Exactly. Or friends. Someone who doesn't drink. <laughs> I don't drink either. So. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, just don't drink and drive. You know, that because one second your life can alter everyone oh else's. Oh my God! And I've seen it so many times. Yeah. It's so unfortunate. Many. It is. With, with all the all the resources out here nowadays, you got like you said, Uber, Lyft, all those ride mm -hmm. shares. Right. And even before that, we had cabs. And you know, but people. Still right. Don't, yeah, the people, cabs. Yeah. People, what's <laughs> that? Yeah, what's the oh, cab? Yeah, Uber and Lyft now yeah, yeah, for the young ones. Yeah, yeah. Uber and young Lyft. Ones, you young ones, young ones. Right cab, what is that? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just, just definitely do not drink and drive. If you are going to drink, don't drive. If mm -hmm. you are, you know, if you're not going to drink, then you be that designated driver for yes. right, somebody right, else, right. And, and you can save somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. At, at the very least, you can save somebody, you know, being arrested. Right. But we we want to go beyond that. You can save right. somebody's life. Exactly. So. Don't drink and drive. Exactly, exactly. It's real, real simple. Mm -hmm. All right, so also, the holidays is a great time for family and friends. What, what do you guys got planned? Working. Working? <laughs> is, do you have family down here? Or uh, in Orlando, still? that's okay. the closest, yeah. Wow, wow. You're gonna be working on Christmas Day? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. You work hidden when you say you work 24-7, huh? <laughs> What about you, Officer Terrell? What are you going to be doing? I'm going to enjoy my Christmas. There you so, go. There you go. So, yes. Yeah, man, uh, spend it with my kids and then travel up to Georgia and spend it in Kennesaw, Georgia with my baby. And uh, it's going to be beautiful, man. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I have kids, too. All the Riviera kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just saw a report that uh, you just adopted a, uh, a dog there. Officer yes. Pellicle, won't you talk about yes. that dog? So Chase is amazing. He is a retired canine. Um, he was uh, given to us about two years ago, three years ago. Um, and uh, he's a black Labrador, he's 63 pounds, and he acts like a six pound. He just, he's full of youth. <laughs> he's full of youth. Um, I'm converting him over to a therapy dog so I can take him to the VA in a children's hospital. Wow, wow. It's really good. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. So that, that's your, your, your child for now, right? That is yeah. my child, yes. <laughs> for a mom, again. Uh, <laughs> yes. You had another dog that you adopted before? I did, before? yeah. She passed away in February. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What kind of dog was she? Pomeranian. Oh, She's wow. Pomeranian. Little one. A little one, yeah. yeah. From little to big. Yeah, this one's a big one now, huh? <laughs> How's she adjusting? Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he takes care of the house. Oh, yeah. yep. there you go. That's, you got your guard He broke out the puppy now. pen, and he's enjoying it. <laughs> All right. So you'll be working during the holiday. Yes. Uh, a lot of us will be working as well in our profession. We thank you guys that are, that are going to be out there working. Uh, I'm in a specialized unit, so I'll be off on, on the holiday. But um, I appreciate I remember working patrol. I had to work on the holidays, too. So, um, yes, I appreciate everybody that's got to work. Mm -hmm. Regardless, regardless if you're in law enforcement or not, you know, we got the emergency workers that will mm -hmm. be working in, in right. the emergency nurses, rooms, doctors, nurses, doctors. Yeah. Hey, even at the 7-Eleven uh, in the gas in the, uh, yes. <laughs> For the my hot stations. dog and pizza. <laughs> yes, yes, so they'll be working as well. But holidays tend to bring out some depressing moments for some people. Yeah. Because there's no family, no friends, uh, some people aren't working. Do you guys encounter some people like that? And if so, what do you guys try to help them out with during the holidays? So we have um, us, right? We're there to listen and hear any of their quarrels. And we try to make their experience with for the holidays happier. We have victim advocates that we utilize um, for any trouble. There's, we have a lot of single, um, single parents that want to do something great for their kids and they're just having a bad time right now, especially right. during COVID. Um, they don't have the funds to make their experience amazing. And officers as well, we go through it, you know, we're not immune as well. No. You guys have wellness programs for officers? We do. That, yeah. you know, we have a company called EAP, mm -hmm. um, and then UNIM, and then our Aetna uh, Behavioral Health. Right. Yeah, yeah, because we're, we're definitely not immune to it. And sometimes we can say it's even worse for all the, all the things that we say, you know, like Officer Terrell, you said all the DUI stuff that yeah. you've seen. So, yeah. yeah. It's the things that we see in our job. We, we, we need some of that wellness, right? Yeah, and, you know, another thing, you know, from being in law enforcement, and I'll be honest, I, it was a time where, 
I wore a smile, but I really was hurting on the inside, you know. So I took that step to actually go outside law enforcement and start a man support group, you know. So, okay. yeah. So um, yeah, I'm just plugging it in on here. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but the floor is yours. We, we you know, we, we meet um, once a month in person, but every Wednesday via Zoom, in case you're out of town or anything, and we just, you know, talk about... Um, issues that we have and hopefully somebody else in that group can solve that issue you know I just felt like it was a, a, a thing that that's really needed especially for you know men you know we're te we're taught to be strong and you can't have feelings that but we be hurting on the inside part, man we part. really be hurting on the inside and, and I hate to say it you know it's a large suicide rate in law enforcement also you know and it was something that I felt that I had to do and step up and provide this out there now, is this just for men in your department, no, your friends? No, any, 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 anybody. How, anybody. How, how can somebody get in touch with you on that? Um, if you, I guess I, I can give you my email address or <laughs> <laughs> phone number. If you just, and you know, I don't mind. You can reach out to me on Facebook. It's, it says, it's Walter, last name Terrell, the second, you know. Um, the second. Yeah, just the second. <laughs> message me. Please message me, and I can send you the code for Zoom, and any way I can help, man, I'm here. Anyway, yeah, that's what's up. Appreciate you on yeah, that. Man. Yeah, because us as men, and even more so in our profession, mm -hmm. um, we're taught not to not to voice how we're feeling. Right. Because yeah. you know we're men and we're police officers, and you know we have to be strong. But uh, yeah, there is that point mm -hmm. where we have to be professional. We have to handle our job. But right. you know afterwards, you know we, we hurt too inside. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we got we gotta we gotta talk about it. We gotta do whatever we can do. To make ourselves better mentally, yeah, you know, yep. you know, we get stress. Stress is that number one killer for us, right? Mm -hmm. totally. stress, so, yeah. yeah. How do you guys deal with stress yourselves? Um, you want me to go first? Okay, Thank well, I'll you. tell you what I do. Um, like I said earlier, man, I'm just into really big into entertainment. So, all right, talk about it. It's filming, um, comedy, love comedy, music, spend time with my family, you know, and. Um, so, are you a comedian? <laughs> Let the chief tell you. I like this. It. Best personality, I gotta say. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, um, he's a funny guy, and he's a natural. Yeah. He really is. So, let, I would like to put him in the improv. Let, let my friends and family tell me that I am. Uh, I, I, I do comedy acting, but to get on that stage, they just saying, "Go on the stage, go on the stage." But man, I'm. Still got to build that confidence up. That's yeah, all. yeah, yeah. That, I, I would say go for it. There's a, uh, there's a guy that I interviewed uh, on my podcast. Um, he is an officer with LAPD, but he's also a stand-up comic. Oh, oh nice. So, uh, what's her name? Linnell? I know Linnell. Yeah. yeah. She uh, took him under her wing, and yeah, he's been Whoa, going on tour. He opened man. for her and, and Cat Williams. Oh, really? So, cool. yeah. Sky's so, yeah, the limit, it, man. it can be done. Sky's can be the done. limit. It, sky is the limit. That's just, awesome. Just keep working on your. I am. On oh, your, I am. On your material. Do you work on your material when you're out there with the, with the people you contact? See, and that's what makes it. <laughs> and this is why it works. This is why it works for me. You know, knock on wood, whatever wood. I'm gonna knock on it. <laughs> but this is why it works for me is because someone can be really angry, and I'll come in there, and because of the personality I have and the jokes that I'll crack, that if they're up there. It's coming down here. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, man, you cool, man. I ain't, I ain't no use. I'll never forget this guy got in trouble, boom, 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 whatever. Had him laughing, and he was like, why are you so nice, bro? Cops are supposed to be, you know, mean. Why are you so nice? And I was like, man, look, it's just my personality. Yeah. That's all. Well, first of all, we're not supposed to be mean. Exactly. We don't, that's their we, thought. Yeah. That's their thought. That's, that's, that's what I mean. That's right. what I mean. So yeah. you, you, We're too you, put nice. the, you put that out there and you let them know. We handle business when it's time to handle business. Right. But for the most part, we out there just, we're husbands and fathers and exactly. daughters and mothers. And we like, you know, th that's part of what I wanted to do this show, to humanize right. us. And let us, let people know that we, we like comedy. We like, right. we like basketball and some badminton and chess. And, exactly. you know, we, some of us do plumbing. I understand the chief was doing some plumbing a little bit yeah. earlier today. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> so, chief. <laughs> so so we, like, we like doing all these things, too. So we're not robots. Right. We're not monolith as well. So, yeah. So on that note, what do you guys like most about your job? We'll wow. start with you, Officer Phillips. Engaging with everyone. Um, we get to powwow anywhere throughout the city, uh, talk to the business um, business shareholders, the residents, the kids. Mm -hmm. 
um, sit down, I mean, I'll sit down at the park and hang out with them while they're shooting basketball, and they'll question me, like, what's going on? What are you doing here? Why are you right. here? And I'm like, oh, I'm just hanging out with you guys. They're like, really? And then, and then like, more of the kids will start gathering around and asking us questions. Um, that, that's, like, the highlight of, of our job, I think, um, just to see their smiles and genuine concerns without any pressure um, if they're having issues with a, a, another student or a parent or a family member. Um, they can open and talk well, freely with us. Um, while we're just randomly out, out and about. Yeah, 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 man. You know, for me, um, what I enjoy most is just engaging with the public. That's really it. I, I don't like taking people to jail. I know people think, oh, you just, I don't like taking people to jail. I don't like writing tickets. But just build, literally building a relationship within the community. You cannot. You you can't beat that. Yeah. To change that per perception of law enforcement. And I know it's not like a political answer, but that's really <laughs> how we be feeling, man. Like, yeah. I we do a lot it. of information. I, I, I love that answer in front of the chief. That's, yeah. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that it's really what it is, just in, engaging with the community. Yeah. We do yeah. a lot of informational um, uh, things. So, mm -hmm. you know, if people, if we pull them over because they went through a particular red light at a train track, we have to say, hey, you know, there's a double red light here. And you can't, just because it's a red light at the first track, and you want to proceed forward to make yeah. a right-hand turn, because like, people say, oh, I can make a right-hand turn on red. Yes, you can, but you still went through a red. I, don't, I would hate for your car to get stuck on the middle of the track. Yes. So you have to stop here. So it's, it's all information. You know, but I mean, we did a garbage clip um, a couple, littering. couple weeks ago yeah, 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 about clip. littering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we, when we have discussions, um, it's how, how we are, as police officers work with the children um, we work a lot with the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. we still, even though we're not in our schools anymore, we still visit the schools yeah. um, so that they still see our faces. And it's great to mm -hmm. say, if we have to go to their home for a domestic call or, or an issue, whatever the issue is, they'll say, hey, mommy, that officer was at my school. And so yeah. that kind of relaxes yeah. the parent or, or the mm -hmm. guardians. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me ask you, you said you, you guys aren't in the school anymore. Is that you too, or the department is no longer uh, have SROs in your schools anymore? So it's the department. We no longer have SROs in the school. Palm Beach yeah. County has the schools now. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's, there's officers still in schools. It's yeah, just yeah, not yeah. us. Okay, yeah. okay. So it wasn't it wasn't one of those since you know. Nah. No, no, no. Because no. no. that happened a lot in LA. Um, mm. LA Unified and all the, a lot of departments out there being pulled out of schools. I'm sure you guys have heard that as well right. since what's been going on. Right, so right, right. I just wonder if that was you know I'm an SRO right now. Okay. So, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I love yeah. that job. I, I'm coming out in September. Been doing it for four years, but uh, yeah, it was a great job. Yeah, did it for yeah six or seven years. Yeah. It was it was kind of hard. Uh, you build so many relationships, and the kids that I started with, you know, I'm seeing them in the uh, they're adults now. I'm like, whoa, yeah. Yeah. this is weird, they're man. Adults. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hold up. But yeah, man, that, being an SRO is pretty cool. Yeah. Was pretty cool. But, yeah, it was pretty cool. So, yeah. but you so you guys say you get to at least visit them. And, you know, oh yeah. 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 Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Palm, it's, Palm, it's Beach, cool to see Palm Beach doesn't kick you out, right? No, no, no. no. <laughs> they, they welcome they, us. They want us in. There. Yeah, they welcome us. Yeah. They're like, oh, thanks to see you guys. So no, that's good. That's, that's really good. Nice. All right, all right. So on the flip side, I ask you, what's the uh, most? Uh, what do you like most about your job? What's the most challenging part of your job? Um, I know for me, seeing someone that you were working with that you try to put on the the right track either end up in prison or dead. That, that's that, the bad turn. The, that, that right there, it always gives me like a queasy feeling in my stomach. Always gives me a queasy feeling in my stomach, you know. Um, but yeah, that's the most challenging for me within this job. Um, me going to a violent crime that potentially we could have stopped um, if we've had some information maybe about the, the young adult or child um, could have been more influential in their life to not have to go make that bad U-turn. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is, that is part, of, part of our job, but it is challenging. You know, I'd have to see that in some people. But uh, hey, that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Try to help as many as we can, right? Yep. So I appreciate that. All right. So we're going to be wrapping this up here. But like I said, I'm going to be visiting here for a little while longer. Where do I absolutely have to visit out here in South Florida? 
I don't know. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> well, you you've know been here longer. I know I've been longer, but man, got, I'm just... like a homebody, man. <laughs> I like to visit my house and chill, you know. <laughs> right. Party it off. Party it off. Well, the I'm a foodie. Yeah, yeah. Party yeah. it y'all. Y'all come on through, man. <laughs> I'm a foodie, so I, I suggest yeah. Yardbird in Miami. Yardbird, okay. Um, yes, and you've already went to Wynwood. Well, what is what is Yardbird? Uh, it's a it's a restaurant. Uh, um, if you like fried chicken. Oh, okay. It's well, very yeah. hence Yardbird. Very, yes. Right. Right. Um, right. Oh, it's delicious. Um, we have some restaurants out here on Ocean Avenue. Uh, yeah. Like I said, Johnny Lombos, who was a big contributor uh, to our COVID relief uh, last, last year. year. Yep. Mulligans, I'm there every morning for breakfast. Every morning. Every <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Loving the French toast. Uh, I used to uh, eat the, the pancakes, but she they gave me. eat French toast, <laughs> so how's she want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they give you three nice stacks of pancakes, and I've only been able to feed it, uh, finish it once. Um, and then we have uh, castaways, so um, craft, Craft beer, um, pizza. pizza and beer. Mm -hmm. They actually are helping us on Friday uh, with our shop with a cup, and they're donating pizzas to the kids. Nice. Um, so that's that's that was great. Pretty, that was nice. So, of really so nice. all our shareholders and business owners want to be involved um, in the city. So it's just great that we have that great connection. Um, also, we have we go? the smoothie spot. We got a smoothie we spot. We have two smoothie yeah. spots. Okay. Yeah. Smoothie. And then are, we got they, are they help? Are they like healthy smoothies? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They I both like the sugary stuff. You know. So <laughs> right. Right. But more the syrup and, yeah. and sugar gain, water. She don't gain no weight. <laughs> I don't know how she do right, it, man. Right. I don't know. <laughs> but we have Officer Phillips, are you? Yeah, I wanted to comment on this. Are you more of an athlete? What, what, what's your background? I'm more of an eater. That's what's crazy. Even though right? I eat more right. than my my coworkers. I can't. Yeah. They, yeah. have the little, they have the kids' I have plate, a, I, have I have the adult plate. I can't even finish my food. <laughs> Genetics, right? Yep. Yes. Straight genetics. But I do stay active. Yeah. Um, walking the dog. Walking the dog, <laughs> yeah. The dog kind of walks me. Um, <laughs> but I do I do stay active. I mean, that's a month, so that's probably my stress reliever. Yeah. yeah. All right. Appreciate that. Okay, so now we got some places that we can visit yeah. out here. Yardbird, definitely. Down Yardbird, there. yes. Yard, a must. Yardbird I must in Miami. Direction. And some smooth. And Johnny <laughs> Longboard is up here. And if you want a great deal, Wendy's. <laughs> they, got a, Wendy's. they got a five for five. You say it was a four for five. You can't beat it, man. <laughs> uh, okay, we got Wendy's back home. Okay, <laughs> man, this is different out here, you know. <laughs> if you're a steak right, eater, yeah. Jay Alexander's, Three Forks. Um, Are they up They're here a la carte. So she know all the they, food, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> they're a la carte. Um, if you want something, uh, let's see, Texas, Texas Roadhouse on Southern. Okay. Oh, they got some great bread. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Their cinnamon rolls or whatever. Right. Oh, so in Selfish Marina. Selfish Marina one. is a very right. good one. And right. eat on the water. All this is being recorded, yes. so I'm, yeah. Rafiki we, we don't, we don't Tiki. Them up. Yes. Yes. Rafiki oh, Tiki is another one. Yeah. Uh, 190 East 13th Street. Oh, great they water got views. Great. Oh, yeah. Great food, especially when you can just sit on the water, watch the boats pass it's by. And That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. All right. So we got some good recommendations. Yeah, we'll we'll try to hit up as many as we can. All of them except Wendy. <laughs> Wendy's, man. I don't know what y'all Oh, oh the food we had, So we food had truck um, food trucks. Uh, we had them in September, October, November. But for December, we were occupying that space with Winter Wonderland. Yeah, but but nice. the food trucks, were they were really nice. Right. So wh where's the Winter Wonderland going to be again? That's going to be uh, at 190 East 13th Street. City Marina. City Marina. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. From All right. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. All right. Friday, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. All right. And be sure to try to get out there and check that out. Yeah. Yes. Go ice skating. I'll be there. <laughs> when won't you be there? Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. the that's the good question, right? I'll be asking her. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, I appreciate you for coming out and then participating in this in this live such as it was. Um, it's been recorded so we will get this out on the platform so everyone can comment there. Um, technical difficulties. We're out here in Florida. Yes. Things, of course. Happen. Things happen. We, we roll with it in law enforcement, right? We right. roll with it. But I appreciate you. You guys be safe. Thank you. Uh, Thank I love everything you guys have been doing. Appreciate and uh, appreciate Thank you, Chief Osgood. Appreciate you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And until uh, next time, my name is Dale. Again, I'm the host of Black and Blue. Uh, please, please like, subscribe to the show. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'm Dale. And we out. Sleigh bells ring, diamonds bling, carol sing, favorite season. Sleigh bells ring, diamonds bling, carol sing, favorite season. They say say Nick, but you gotta be in that bag, yeah. I got racks racks in my sack, in my bag, yeah. They say say Nick, but you gotta be in.